from the first time an artist put paint to paper, a photograph was printed, right through to the first time a screen was manufactured. Aspect ratios have been part of our lives, and whether we know it or not, this has a lot to do with how we view our photographs. Now, there's one aspect ratio that's almost perfect for landscape photography that the internet hates. Can you guess which one it is? Let me know in the comments below. An aspect ratio normally comes in the form of two numbers separated by a colon. It's basically the width of your photo in relation to the height. So a square photo would have the same length along the top as it would down the side. So one unit by one unit or a one to one ratio. So if I took a photo like this, I might want it as a square photograph. If it was a much wider photograph where that width was twice that of the height, if you broke it down into squares, it would be two squares side by side. So it'd have two units along the top, one down the side. Hence, a two to one aspect ratio. So what about computer monitors and TVs? Well, currently they have an aspect ratio of 16 to nine. This is where it gets a bit more mathsy, but it follows the same rule. If you overlaid a grid of squares on your screen and had 16 along the top, you'd have nine of those squares down the side. So it doesn't matter if the side is 16 pixels or a million pixels. It's determined by how big one side is compared to the other. So the thumbnail for this video was a 16 by nine image. My camera takes a three by two image and Instagram all started with a one by one image. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail when it comes to cinema, but they have aspect ratios of 1.85 to one or 2.35 to one. And this is why sometimes when you watch a movie at home, you'll have black strips along the top and the bottom. The first number normally relates to the width and the second number normally relates to the height. Although you can buy a panorama camera called a six by 17. Those cameras use 120 film and that film is basically six centimeters tall. And that's where that number six comes from. A six by 17 camera is basically a three to one panorama camera. Now a three by two photo will be longer along the top than down the side. Whereas a two by three image will be shorter along the top than down the side. So that's the two and this is the three. Now you've already heard me mention landscape and portrait orientations. These just get their names from those genres of photography. Landscapes are normally big and wide, hence you hold the camera in a horizontal position. Whereas with portraits, people are normally standing up. So you get your camera in a vertical position and the photograph is taller than it is wide. Now camera sensors also have an aspect ratio and I've mentioned sensors already. These are normally three by two in full frame cameras and most crop sensored cameras, although there are some exceptions. Now my a7 IV has a pixel count of 7,008 by 4,672. It's quite a random set of numbers, but then if you divide 4,672 by 7,008, you get 0.66, which is basically 66%, which is basically two thirds hence three to two aspect ratio. Most modern cameras have different options for aspect ratios, and this will show them on the back of your camera. If you shoot JPEGs, these will be final and saved in that aspect ratio. But if you shoot RAW files, this is just an overlay that you can change later when editing. Now, if you're old enough to remember photo prints, you'll remember that they came in a six by four format. This was basically the size in inches, six inches by four inches. If you half both of those numbers, that comes to three by two or three to two, and that's the aspect ratio of those prints. This equates to the aspect ratio of 35 millimeter film. And like I've already mentioned, the same aspect ratio as the sensor in a full frame camera. So an aspect ratio can be calculated from anything from your sensor to the TV to a photo print. If you have a medium format camera like the Fuji GFX, this has a four to three aspect ratio sensor. And this is a common aspect ratio for medium format cameras in general. So it's four units by three units. So slightly shorter and stockier than the full frame aspect ratio. This is a nice aspect ratio as it makes your photos look wider when you have it in the portrait orientation. I'll often crop my portrait oriented photos down to this as it just seems to be a little bit more pleasing to my eye. Now, if we go back in history a little bit, large format cameras had an aspect ratio of four to five. And this is where those popular portrait prints of eight by 10 came from. If you half eight by 10, you get four by five or a four to five ratio. 
When it comes to that aspect ratio that really doesn't work online, it's the panorama. It's the three to one, four to one, or maybe a five to one panorama. I love shooting panoramas. And if you've seen any of my videos from last year where I'm out on location shooting landscapes, you'll know I love a really good panorama. The problem is when these are viewed on a screen, maybe like you're watching on now, it just doesn't work. And it's even worse on phone screens. You can cut the panorama up into smaller squares and then post them together so you can swipe through that panorama, but it still doesn't do that image justice. The three to one panorama has to be my all time favorite aspect ratio. Check this one out of the mountain range that I took earlier in the year. It's absolutely fantastic and it looks so good in person when it's printed, but it doesn't look so good on a phone or it doesn't look so good on a computer screen as well. And this is the hardest thing about this video. I'm trying to show you how good these panoramas can actually be on a format that really doesn't show them off that well. I actually love shooting panoramas so much that I've been looking into getting a six by 17 camera, which is basically that three to one format. I'd love it if one of the manufacturers actually made a sensor in that shape, but they don't. Well, not that I know of one anyway. If you know of one, let me know in the comments below. Now, the reason that panorama digital cameras don't exist is because of Photoshop. It's so easy to take 10 photographs or however many photographs and stitch them together into one big panorama. However, that makes it really hard when you're shooting in the field and you wanna see what you've taken before you go home. You don't have that option and you have to kind of envisage what that image might look like when you do get home and when you do start editing. The reason I love this aspect ratio is because of how it prints and how it looks when it's hung on the wall. And you don't have to fill the wall with a huge three by two print for it to look grand. You can get away with using less paper and ink, which will save you money, giving you the option of printing bigger. Nick Carver, who's a fantastic film stills photographer, talked about why he shoots a lot in this format in one of his latest videos. One of the biggest things he said that makes so much sense to me is that it combines expansiveness with confinement all in one photograph. So if you have a big landscape in front of you, you can shoot really wide and get that expansive landscape, but you don't need to have the sky or the foreground in that shot. And it really makes what might be quite an average photograph into an exceptional photograph when you get a good composition. So the next time you're out, instead of just thinking about a landscape or a portrait orientation, start thinking about panoramas. And when you do get a good one, print it and hang it on your wall and you'll be so surprised at how grand that landscape looks. Now, if you want to learn how to take a panorama, it's a surprisingly easy process. And in this video, I show you exactly how to do that. I'll see you next time.